Hello transport nerds and welcome to a beautiful February morning on the banks of Sydney Harbour. You might recall in previous episodes that I pointed out three icons of Sydney public transport. The Freshwater Class Ferry, the Tangara Train and the Mercedes-Benz Custom Sitaro. We've already taken a trip on the Tangara and a ride on board the Sitaro, so let's top off the trifecta by catching the ferry across to Manly. And just in case you were wondering, yes, I am aware that Sydney has a light rail network. It's just that much of it is a recent addition and the Vario trams that I enjoyed catching as a kid have now been retired for some time and Sydney's old tram network disappeared in the late 50s and early 60s. Of course, what trip to Sydney is complete without a wander around Circular Quay and on this crisp February morning, Queenscliff pulls into Sydney Harbour. And of course, I missed catching it so I had to wait around for another half an hour for the next Manly Ferry. I did get to watch Queenscliff depart though, so it wasn't all wasted. Since I was now on the correct side of the harbour, and I had plenty of time before my next ferry, I had a quick look at a couple of first fleet class ferries which were waiting around at their berths before starting the morning runs. After that, I tapped in on the correct berth and making my way to the front of the pontoon, I got a lovely view of the freshwater class ferry Narrabeen pulling alongside, ready to unload hundreds of passengers heading into town. Once on board, it was pretty clear that today's service wasn't going to be a full load. So let's take the unique opportunity to wander around an almost empty ferry. And since this ferry really isn't filling up, let's also wander down the side to try out another seat before we depart from the harbour.
Because of the size of these freshwater class ferries, there are plenty of different spots to sit, and now that I've made it upstairs, I decided to watch a river cap depart through the slightly grubby windows. And as it turns out, I was actually one of the first passengers to jump on board, so I had plenty of time to explore the ferry before we depart. After making my way up toward the other end, it was time to grab a seat. On the wall, I noticed a campaign poster to save the Manly Ferries. And sure, I'm sympathetic to the cause, but it's important to keep in mind that some of these freshwater class ferries are rapidly approaching 40 years old, and it takes quite a lot to keep these older ships in top shape. Welcome aboard. For your comfort and safety, please keep files clear of obstructions at all times. Life jackets are located under your seats and in clearly marked storage sections in the entrance doors in the front of the vessel. In the event of an emergency, follow the instructions of the crew. Smoking is not permitted anywhere on board the vessel. Thank you for your cooperation. So this ferry is probably one of Sydney's most popular tourist attractions and forms of public transport all in one package. So that means normally it can be pretty busy, but at the moment, if you're particularly like me, not afraid to get out early in the morning, it's surprisingly quiet on the Manly Ferry. Uh, there's probably 30 or 40 people on board. This ferry has some crazy capacity, which I'll look up and pop the number on the screen there, around there probably. And yeah, we're nowhere even close to that capacity at the moment. So as far as I'm concerned, if you can get to Sydney right now and you're a big ferry fan, now's a great time to go on a Manly Ferry, especially on an early morning in the weekends, because then you're not too likely to run into crowds. As we make our way out of Sydney Harbour, it's always wonderful to see the views of the North Shore and with the spectacular Harbour Bridge as a backdrop, Sydney really has scenery to rival any other world city I can think of. These ferries also feature a ferry bar, but thanks to mask wearing that was mandatory at the time of filming, and it being slightly too early in the morning for a pint, the bar was closed. Still, I hope to see the day when it returns. As we continue on our way towards Manly, you can see the large residential towers on the shores of the harbour, and a pretty decent sized navy vessel berthed in the harbour. After a few more minutes of scenic cruising, I decide to make my way toward the exit where you'll find these flip up seats from across the gangway. That funny looking door is lowered to become an exit ramp and those handrails swing out from the sides. But since staring at a blank metal plate isn't my preferred view, I decided to move back to a window seat where I could continue to watch the world go by. An Emerald class ferry passed
passes us by as it travels toward the inner harbour. Moving back outside, I can definitely appreciate the views of the cliffs and of some of Australia's most exclusive postcodes. And I quickly concluded that I'm going to need to cut back on my avocado and latte consumption to buy them. That's all it takes, right? After consigning myself to the fact that I'll probably never call the Lower North Shore home, and I've just managed to keep that fancy powerboat out of camera focus, Queenscliff makes its way into view. It seems that the water is a little rougher on that side of the harbour, as Queenscliff is pitching around a little. Still, once you zoom in, it becomes clear why the off-yellow and green colour scheme was adopted for these ferries, as it complements the cliffs rather nicely. When delivered, however, these ferries sported a blue and white livery in line with Urban Transport Authority branding at the time. As we continue ever closer to Manly, we must discuss the faster options, including the Manly Fast Ferry and further back the Jetcat and Hydrofoil services. The northern beaches have always struggled with transport connectivity and with a lack of heavy rail, light rail and congestion choked roads, there have been many faster and pricier proposals and alternatives over the years. Hydrofoils started operating in the mid-1960s and were popular with people who thought time was money and could empty out their wallets to halve their journey time. Their expense was part of their downfall and in 1990 the Jet Cat was introduced, which lasted until 2008 when fast ferries became part of the private domain. Various private operators are now battling it out to deliver fast ferries and I called a manly My Fast Ferry service last year in February on my way back from a job interview in Manly. Edging towards Manly, you can see the long line of empty seats and of course the operator plaque, with these ferries proudly operated by Transdev Sydney Ferries. As we slow down to enter Manly Harbour, let's have a bit of a listen to those engines which are a pair of Daihatsu 8DS MB32s, each developing 3,000 horsepower. They're also said not to be the most efficient engines out there. Pulling alongside the berth, you can get a true appreciation for the size of these ferries as the 1,140 ton displacement and 70 metre length is far larger than most urban ferries and they dwarf river cats and other smaller vessels with ease. But before I depart, I noticed this deck layout plan which shows the true size of these ferries. Pretty cool! And of course, after making my way onto the dock, here's another shot of Narrabeen waiting for its return trip to Circular Quay. Well, that was a ride on board Australia's most iconic ferry, 
thank you so, so much for joining me and I will see you again next time.